by the way. Denzel. Denzel. Mm-hmm, like Denzel Washington. Yep, that's what I got. All right, hello, everyone. This is Ken with Jamatra Sports God. I am online with my new best friend here, Lobo. <laughs> Nah, we just met. We're just going to do a video and see how it goes. So I'll call my new best friend. Hopefully we'll be good buddies. But uh, Denzel here is offered to, you know, share the screen time with me. And we're building our channels and talk a little about gematria and sports and betting. And I do sharp betting. I have some new tools I've been using. But uh, we're going to focus on him today and what he's doing because he has a lot of videos on gematria. I've watched him about three, four times so far. And, I mean, I don't know how you find the time to pull up like <laughs> – like the rig Redskins and Seahawks and all this kind of, I just don't have the time. I have a full-time job and I do other stuff too and day <laughs> trading and I just don't have the time for that stuff. So like I said, I want to do some interviews and get some ideas. And so I guess, how did you get started? How long ago was it? Like, did you start with Zach and learn it from him and go from there? Like what, what how, how'd you get started? Uh, let's see what really got me into the rig sports and figuring out it was scripted was really just diving deeper on the other side, I guess the conspiracy or truth or side of things, whether it be like what goes on in the entertainment industry, hip hop, uh, flat or stuff like that. And then it had me thinking, you know what, if all of this other stuff is fake and scripted, I know sports has to. And one day it was that Ram saints game. And then the combination with the Chiefs Patriots game later that night, there was like, why is it that the Patriots always seem to find a way to get to the Super Bowl or win it? And then I started doing some digging, found out everything about, you know, it's being scripted. It's basically WWE. Um, I learned about the the basket manipulation of basketball before that, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, that didn't even sound crazy to me. Like, you know how it some didn't. people be telling about, like, a magnet in the football, they can't wrap their head around that concept for some reason? So, yeah, that's what really got me into, like, rig sports. And then the Jermontria aspect of it was, yeah, you said it, Zach Hubbard. Yeah, I started listening to it. Someone told me about it first, and it was politics. The way it started was I was in the gym, and I was talking to one of my buddies, and he's an older guy, and he's a military guy. We started talking about, you know, politics and presidents and – and I said, well, I, I think Trump's going to win. This guy behind me is like, oh, yeah, he's not going to win. I'm like, and you are? And he's like, Ishmael. I'm like, well, why do you say that? He goes, it's all in the numbers. I'm like, okay, sure. W what numbers? He's like, Gematria? What? I didn't. I never heard of that before. I'm like, what the hell is Gematria? And he started telling me. I'm like, okay. I said, well, explain it. I'm, I'm open to many things. I'll be open until someone either proves me wrong or proves me right or says, you know, this is what it is, like it or not. Okay. I could judge my, my So we talked and he's like, the numbers aren't there, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, give me your number. So we talked for like three hours that day. And I still, mm -hmm. I'm looking, I'm going, my back of my mind, I'm like, numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Numbers <laughs> don't lie. But the forefront, I'm going, how can they possibly do that? Like, how can they script politics and people and but then you start seeing things how people's real name in politics and movies are, are not their real names by birth right so you start seeing yeah. oh you start seeing correlations then he goes at first uh, after a couple of months i'm like yeah I don't, I don't think i could buy into it dude he goes well you know people were making money in sports right i'm like sorry what and I've never, <laughs> I I, I'm, oh, well i was never a gambler but i'm like what i said how he's like with the numbers i'm like show me he started showing me i started doing some codes i'm like wow <laughs> maybe there's something to this so it was a, it was a fun ride from then it was about a year it's been a year and like a month i think when i finally got tuned into zach but yeah dude it, it's nuts and this whole like i get the concept of magnetized balls and basketballs golf balls i just don't see enough proof yet to say i 100 percent agree like i get it i mm -hmm. get it right I, but i have seen things like when I was a kid, footballs went straight like this, or they had a slight arc to it. Now they're like uh, they shift and go like the you know different directions. I'm going, is there someone with a joystick back there like going like this? Like like is it the man behind the curtain? Like who who's doing this stuff, right? Yeah. And so like how how do you like how do you explain that? How do you you said you learned to buy in the past? I just don't see how they can actually guide a football in the right direction. Or I, I mean, what how do you what's your opinion on that? Okay, well, I'm going to start with the field goals first. Well, you obviously think about what a field goal looks like. Like, if, pretend this is a field goal. Uh-huh. Does it not look like a magnet? You know, like the, the U-shaped magnet looks a lot like a magnet. Let's start <laughs> off with that. 
Okay, fair enough. I'll and then that. if you've heard of the ultimate reception football, I know I got a video of it on my channel where they put a little transmitter inside the ball and then they sew it back up. It looks like a normal football. Mm-hmm. Right. So with this transmitter, they can turn it on and off. Mm. So think about, say, the Saints. I forgot who they were playing this year, but a field goal inside the Superdome where no wind is blowing. Keyword, no wind is blowing. Correct. Hooked suddenly to the what the left or right for no reason and they just missed. Mm. Where they do that at? Well, can't the football just – because these soccer-style kickers do have a kick arch when they kick a lot of times. Is it possible just that – I'm just debating the fact of it, it's possible that devil's advocate. It's possible they could have a slight arc to it. So how do you explain that part? I've all, Yeah, I've thought of that too because I know, you know some of them, you know, you got traditional-style kickers, soccer-style mm-hmm. kickers. But it's what really lets me know something ain't right is, you know, like if you – I play soccer growing up, like the ball will arc, you know, mm-hmm. shortly after you kick it. Sure. Their ball, whenever they kick a field goal, it will go straight in line, and then uh-huh. at the last minute, it will suddenly hook. That is I not do normal. See that. I see that. Or quite. they'll hook yeah. out. What was it? Jacksonville and the Jets, the one they in London. They always put them sorry teams in London. But anyway, like, it <laughs> yeah, hooked right. out wide. It was like a long field, like a 50-some yard. It hooked out like this, uh-huh. and then suddenly it hooked right back in at the last second. Mm-hmm. But like Alabama and a and m in football, a and ms game winning field goal, when they do the same thing, it should have been missed, and then at the last second, hook right in. Mm. And um, I even had um an interview with someone who was a former Arkansas manager. He was like running practice, show me the game scripts and all this. Oh yeah, he was yeah, he mm. was saying that in college, strictly in college, mm-hmm. just like the ultimate reception uh, commercial, whatever you want to say, says it's outlawed in college and in high school. He said they don't use grip gloves in college, so when they one hand catching and stuff regular season. They really, they really did that. Okay. Now, he did say this. Whenever they give the football to the referees and let them weigh in before the game, uh-huh. they would be gone for like 20, 25 minutes. And he was saying, like, you can just do that on the field. Like, just you know, yeah. check the air right there. Boom. Good to go. Sure. Yeah. But he say some, he's seen some weird things happen to the, the kicking ball because they have, you know, regular oh, yeah. ball and then the kicking yeah, ball. Yeah, they switch all the time. Interesting. And they use, like, I think it was at like 84 balls in baseball. Mm-hmm. Per like game, that. per game, or something. There's an X amount of, there's a certain amount of number of footballs they use per game too. So, I, I've been trying to like keep an eye on things and try to watch and see like that looks kind of weird or that looks weird. Like I don't, know, I just saw, I don't know, it wasn't yours, I don't think. Someone else showed a video of the last couple minutes of the Rams game when they last game they played and that interception was a pick, mm-hmm. and the Ram guy caught the ball and they showed his defender walked up and grabbed him, threw him on the ground, and he's he was claiming that. He wasn't supposed to pick the ball. He wasn't supposed to run back for a touchdown. So his own teammate grabbed him, threw him on the ground. Dang. Was, I'm like, and he showed it through. He showed it back and forth. And you can see the guy, he, his own player grabbed him, pulled him backwards. Like, no, don't run. I'm like, okay. And also, whoop, <laughs> sometimes you look at stuff, you're like, like, like Dak Prescott running down the field from what, the 31? Mm-hmm. Why? Why? 18 That's what seconds. I'm saying. That doesn't make any sense sense at all to me like some things just don't if they don't make sense you have to ask yourself was he throwing the game was it planned that way like to me no one's ever come forward in my life i've ever heard and said i was a boxer in 75 and i got paid 20 grand to take a fall in the fifth no one's ever come out no one's ever just openly come out and said that i'm thinking it's human nature for people just to rat out people at some point at least like mm-hmm. Seiko and but that's never happened so i'm like okay well, someone's got to say something at some point, you know, and I've seen where uh, there's a guy who was trying to sue, I think, the gaming commission for rigging games with, with officials and stuff like that. Now, that I definitely see the officials. That def, That's a definite. You can see so many times the game's going to change. Oh, penalty, 15 yards, first down. You're like, oh, man, okay. So that's my that's- take on it so far. Good. I was gonna say that's crazy. You brought up the referees. I've actually never done a besides the one in the really? undeniable true video. I've never done a you know like a referee clip. You gotta, <laughs> so of all the things, that's be the most rigged thing there is as far as rigged yeah. sports goes. No, no. I've also come to the, my conclusion is like there's this guy saying the games are scripted. And there's always oh, a player. They were talking to a player on this video, uh, old player, and he's like. 
He goes, look, man, at the end of the day, they know who they want to win and they're going to win. He's like, you're saying they're scripted? He goes, I'm telling you, if they know if they want someone to win, they will win. He didn't say scripted. He just said, like, he didn't want to rat it out. Like, I'm just mm -hmm. telling you. And uh, Oh, the, he, uh, the White Smith? Mm -hmm. Play for the Buccaneers on that radio show? May, yeah. Recent, yeah, I got right? the video yeah, for I, that, yeah. That, send it to me if you get a chance. I want to see it again. And it's things like that. Like, Larry Johnson came out, and I'm like, okay, well. But if you watch the refs, You'll see when it's a, a close game or something, like a point differential, say like three and the line spreads, like three and a half. You'll mm -hmm. see a penalty to keep them from that like kicking point or too far away to where if they do kick it, it's like, ah, Vegas lost an extra million. But if they don't miss it, if they do miss it, they win like $20 million. So I get, I don't know how they script some of this stuff, but I think it's scripted on both sides because he was saying both teams have a script. They both know every play they're going to run. However, not everybody runs it perfectly. That's why there's accidents that happen. So they kind of keep it kind of like a closed knit circuit, I guess, in the sense, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but watch the refs, dude. If you watch the refs, and I also picked up on Tony Romo every football game. You know, <laughs> you know, they, I like I, I hate him back in the day, but I love him now. He's a good announcer. Yeah, same. Every time they throw the ball, it's like you know they throw the ball say 18, 20 yards before the ref spots the ball. Those guys in the booth go, oh, that's 18 yards. I'm going, they didn't mark it yet. How do you know it's not 17 or 19? And if mm, you want, I've if never you, thought about that. If you listen to that, it happens all the time. Like one game, the, what was it, the Buccaneers? It was like third and nine. He goes, oh, it was a great time for uh, Brady to throw to Scotty Miller. Boom, first down. I'm like, he keeps doing that. And he keeps saying scripted over and over. I'm like, can he be any more obvious? I mean, but some people... They don't think that's true. If you look up is NFL entertainment in Google, it says, yes, they can change the outcome at any game when they want to legally. Mm -hmm. so, on the tickets, it says for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> <laughs> like, but what do you think of other sports? Do you think like, I don't know. I don't know that baseball's like that. Cause I played baseball and I faced 92 miles an hour before. I don't mm -hmm. care who you are. It's hard to hit. Oh, it's baseball hard. scripted it, oh, I, I, as hell. Uh, you think so? Oh, that's the easiest one to spot, in my opinion, because because I actually like enjoy on. watching baseball. Like the average yeah. person is so slow, yeah. but it's so crazy because you think it takes five minutes between what a pitch essentially. Sometimes. They're working together. The teams are working together. So, say the Braves are playing the Dodgers in the um, NLCS. Uh huh. I think it was in the first it was in the first inning when Jock Peterson cranked that home run. Think about uh -huh. it. Jock Peterson played for the Dodgers and won a ring last year with the Dodgers. Okay. The pitcher, which the announcer pointed off, threw it right down the middle. A off speed pitch right down the middle. Mm -hmm. Jock cranks it, mm -hmm. gone, and we know the rest is history. Mm -hmm. And I think and there was then, a sign. Uh, there was a sign where he hit the ball like a 69 or something related to some other hit he did or something like that. I was like, okay. Yeah. And then uh, what's another one? Dang, I just I just had it slip my mind. Oh, Dexter Fowler after the Cubs won the World Series, he said, just like we scripted it. Straight I hear up. that. I hear that a lot. Yep. And I remember whenever it was the uh, Black Lives Matter going on, I remember Brady ran up to Gronk. He goes, dude, a couple of tighties, right? He meant tidy whiteies. Get it? Like white guys. I'm like, mm -hmm. but no, everyone thinks that's just funny. I'm like, there's a lot. If you listen to what people say, there's a lot behind that. You know, you have to kind of analyze what, what the news is saying and analyze what these sports announcers are saying and go, huh? Okay. Well, there's a lot of just a lot of crazy stuff out there, and gematria is a lot of fun. But I will tell you this: coding numbers for baseball, football, soccer, everything else, man, it is work. Oh, there's a lot because there's so many random connections to this, oh, to that, to that, to that. Weird. This day to that day, like uh, yeah. someone sent me a thing for why the Packers were going to win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, and I've he had like good. a page and a half. I was like, how did the hell did you, you know, what I'm saying get all I of this? Well, I had one Shout for the him, I, had, I had one for this last. You know, Luxy, Luxy ninety one. He does all the hockey stuff and stuff. Uh, hockey and international rugby. I've heard that name, Luxy ninety one. He's predicted four four years in a row, beginning at the end of the season in hockey. He predicted the next year winner four times. Last <laughs> year he got yeah. Last year he got it wrong. He's he's got proof of everything. Last year he did it wrong. He had the Islanders. I took him. It was like eighteen hundred to one odds. I'm like, I'll put fifty bucks down and win like three grand. Why not? And they were going to play the Penguins, but he's like, they're going to smoke the Penguins four to one and, or four to one, four to two. And they did 42. And then 
I had a script for the Penguins and the Steelers that year because there's Ben was number seven, going for seven, right? Mm-hmm. There's all these numbers. He's number 11. He was drafted number 11, the Big Ben clock. I'm like, there's way too much information to say that he's going to not win. And I'm like, there was things on black and gold. You type in black and gold in the cipher. That came up on there. It was Penguins gold. I'm like, okay, Penguins Steelers. We having a repeat like we did back in the day when the Penguins and the Steelers both won the same year. Mm-hmm. And I sent that to Luxie. I'm like, you sure, bro? He goes, uh, that's a really good point. And then after this, he didn't say until afterwards. He goes, you know, someone sent me a code right when the playoffs started. He goes, I got a little bit worried about the Penguins. However, remember how the Lakers lost? They were sevens. Right, all the sevens mm-hmm. connected. The Steelers lost sevens. The Islanders had a lot of numbers. They lost. The Penguins lost last year. I can't help but wonder if the teams it seemed like a sacrifice this past year, like Lakers, Penguins, Steelers, if the next year they're gonna win. Because I heard someone say the other day the Islanders coming on them and they have not been playing all that great, but mm-hmm. they were a good team last year. So the whole thing with Gematri is it's tricky. Mm-hmm. It's hard to pick things, you know, because Baylor upset Gonzaga. We had Gonzaga all, I had Gonzaga all the way through based on what Zach said. And the Lakers, they lost too. And the Steelers yeah, this year. Yeah, I had the Lakers too. Yeah, the Steelers this year, they just, they just, they're horrible. It was unbelievable. All that talent, it's like, well, what are they doing? So, <laughs> well, there's, there's definitely something to some, like, even Najee Harris had numbers from Bama coming to Steelers. I'm like, he's a perfect fit for us. And then my, you know, I go to the gym here in Pittsburgh. They'll mm-hmm. never pick up run him as a running back. I'm like, why wouldn't they? He's going to go in the first round. No, he won't. They need a lineman. I'm like, they're going to pick Najee Harris based on the numbers. Sure enough, they pick Najee Harris. So Boom. Joe Burrow's primed to win the U.S. who I pick. I'm taking the Bengals, dude. You're the Tiger. Same. I mean, it, it's – if now I think if the Bengals don't win, mm-hmm. what that means to me, I got a guy who's – He's followed Zach for a long time. He's a, he's a really good sports better. He knows how to bet. He sent me his slips from Vegas. He's hitting like five hundred bucks for three grand. He's hitting eighteen hundred bucks for six thousand on parlays. He's doing really well with Jamatria. But he took mm-hmm. the Packers. Took the Packers. He was I was wrong about the Packers. But he's saying he's he's look leaning towards the Bengals because of the numbers. Now, if all those numbers add up to the Bengals losing, for me, that means if it's too good, too many numbers for one team. Stay away from it. Bet the op- bet the opposite. Mm-hmm. You see, it seems like a trick. Do you think that's pretty normal? Yeah, I mean, obviously it depends sometimes too. Because I have, I do believe after this year, mm-hmm. they definitely be switching up the script. I hundred yep. percent believe this season they switch up the script. Ain't oh yeah, no that's, hell that's I believe this, Cincinnati yeah. was supposed to get there. Ain't no way. Well, everyone in, where I'm from in the East, we all knew the Bengals would probably win our division. Because they're they're an underrated football team. Joe Burrow's yeah. a good quarterback. They have, Mixon's a good running back. They have that Chase. He's a great receiver. Their defense is solid. So it's like you can't count them out. Now my my sleeper was the Titans. I thought it, and they won the AFC. I was like, oh, wow, okay, close. You know, I'm glad the Bucks lost. I just want to see. I want the Bengals to win. I think it'd be really cool because it's a they played in. I want to say 89, 91. They lost to San Fran, right? So, yeah. I think it was 88, 91. Is that right? 91? I think it was I thought they went to one Super Bowl. I know. No, they, they the Bengals and the Niners played in two Super Bowls, and the second one they played was the highest rated Super Bowl ever. And it's the third time they're going to play. So you almost have to say, okay, if the Bengals win, they're one and three against them, 13. That's been a big number so far in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And that looks like it's it's hard to say no to that. And I don't think Garoppolo is going to pull it out. Wait, let me see. Yep. Title game, first chance, first place, 82, 82 and 89. 80. Oh, really? I thought it was 81. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 82 and 89. Yeah. And then they play in the LA Rams this year. So, yep. Like, I didn't, I didn't think that. Uh, oh, that's right. Oh, duh, I'm retarded. I was, pl- I'm sorry. I was planning on seeing. The Niners and them, but then now it's like okay, there's a, there's a wrench in the system because the Rams are playing at the, their home field, like the Buccaneers did last year, and mm-hmm. everyone's going, well, they're not going to make that two in a row like that. I'm like, well, why wouldn't they? I mean, what's the big, what's the big deal for not doing that? Yeah, I don't really see them. My thing is this: obviously, you got the uh, Matt Stafford connection going for the Rams. Yeah, 
But I just don't see him having a home team win two years in a row. And then I know the thing is if the Rams win, it could solidify fan base. No, that's not true. They don't you need don't him to win. Them. Think about the Vegas Golden Knights. They first mm-hmm. year they got to the Stanley Cup finals. They didn't need him to win. They no. just gave the team hopes. It's like, okay, we got a really good team. Mm-hmm. We're going to stick around. Let's see if they win it next year. You know what I'm saying? Like the Rams already have a fan base. They don't need to solidify a, a fan base. Yeah, you just drop a team in L.A., you got a fan base. I mean. Unless it's the Chargers. <laughs> they still have a fan base. They just can't win. Bro, the Chargers don't have a fan base. I've you never don't, seen don't one so? L.A. Charger fan in my entire life. I've never seen a San Diego Charger, which I know they had fans. But I've never seen a San Diego Charger fan in my entire life. Well, I used to live in San Diego, so that's where I was. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, my that biased opinion, yeah. <laughs> but, however, when the Steelers came there, it was black and gold everywhere, dude. At, at I remember home, that game. Field. Yeah, it was nuts. So, I'm going to miss Phillip Rivers, man. He was my favorite uh, QB quarterback in uh, fantasy football for all those years. Nobody ever picked him. The censored ever. trash talker. Huh? The censored trash talker. Phillip Rivers? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they he call talks him? so much – I Does call it? him that because he talks so much trash, he never cussed, which is really no. hard to do playing football. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's got like six kids or something. I don't know, something crazy. Yeah, he's like a high school coach for like his sons now, what, back in Alabama? Or oh, really? Something, Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Which makes sense. Sure, sure. There's also another uh, connection with uh, the champions, champions. Think about it. You have the Georgia Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, Atlanta Braves, Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. What 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 they start with again? The Bengals with a B. What's the connection? The Baylor Bears. I'm just thinking about the pattern but from all the champions this past cycle of sports. Yeah, all what? of them had that B. Start with a B. Uh, Think about it. Braves, Braves, Bucks, Bears, Bulldogs, Bears. What's next? Bengals. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's a good pattern. Hmm. Sometimes I hate Gematria. Sometimes I hate even got into it because it. Well, you're right. There's a pattern there, but that pattern could change the next game. You never know. Yeah, like, I see I, what you're saying. Like it could know. be like a 2021 thing or something like that. Yeah, it seems like they flip things from. I guess year. I have, I have to do. I have to get in this a little bit more throughout the next year, and I'm trying to. Like I said, the Lakers, the Penguins, the Baylor Bears upset. You know, there was definitely a connection to that with the guy dying. And uh, with the – remember the Asian hate crime? Mm-hmm. They started that one weekend. Well, that guy, Matsushuri or whatever, he won the Asian – he won the Masters. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah. the same day, the female uh, amateur, she was Asian. She won too. I'm like, huh, okay. Whatever. I, I, we... <laughs> I'm like – Couldn't script it any better. Can't script – well, yeah, it's, it's just nuts. It's nuts. You, you, you don't do anything in the pol- political world. You just do all the sports, huh? Uh, yeah, I don't really touch much as far as uh, politics goes. Yeah, I try to stay away, but I still watch Zach every, you know, at least once, twice a week, a little bit to keep in contact. Because some of those numbers, I, I don't know. He's got a live stream. I haven't got to it yet today, but uh, mm-hmm. I'll try to get to it tomorrow and try to take a peek and see and see what's going on with these numbers because there's just too much there, man. There's just too much. Yeah. So what are, what are you working on now? Oh, uh, let's see. I'm working on got a sauce walker Illuminati breakdown. I gotta drop that one soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, been doing some cartoon breakdowns, so you know, you know, sublim- su- <laughs> subliminal symbolism. It took me a minute to say the word. That's okay. I do. That <laughs> yeah, <too>. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Subliminal symbolism and cartoons stuff like that. Mm-hmm. First thing I want to do, Eddie and Eddie. Uh, okay. Fairly odd parents. Holy crap. Fairly odd. I see. I don't know what that is. I never pay attention. Um, you remember, you ever heard the name Timmy Turner? I've heard of it. Like, Timmy? Timmy? Was that the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Timmy, yeah I remember that. Yeah, the little buck tooth, had buck teeth with the fairies and whatnot. Yeah, that show. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of symbolism out there. And some, like I said, people just, I wish they'd pay more attention. But the one guy sent me a thing today. It says, must watch Area 51, 2005 video game, Plandemic, Vaccines, Agenda, NWO, SARS, HIV virus, Aliens. It's on BitChute. Oh yeah, Plan- uh, pandemic. Yeah, that game. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've been new about that game since uh, high school. It was like it used to be like a computer game on uh, was it mini clip? Oh really? Or addictinggames.com. It was like you know you create your virus, add your mutations to it, make it harder to find a cure, and watch. Yeah, you watch the map turn red as it spreads, oh, and you God. see them shut down airports, nice. trains, 
uh, supplies go low, yeah. economy crash. Literally everything that goes on in a pandemic happens mm-hmm. in this game. Yeah. And the funny thing is in 2020 when the whole shit popped off, that game became free on Xbox Game Pass that same year. Really? Like right after the lockdown, I saw it on Game Pass. I was like, wow. Why was it that free? That was not coincidence. I mean, you what the game is old as I don't know what. Yeah. They it's not going to sell. You can't sell it at 60 bucks. Ain't nobody buying it at that. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's like just an old game then. Yeah, but it just happened to be pandemic in 2020 and then they yeah. dropped destroy all humans in 2020 the remake like come on <laughs> it's nuts dude it's totally it's nuts. like uh well they dropped the matrix around the time they announced the metaverse it's like metaverse yeah. shortly after that that new matrix movie just pops up yeah that's true the new james the, the new james bond movie i heard they wouldn't release it because it was too real life for people during the pandemic it was supposed to come out right when the pandemic started it almost it took almost two years to to release it so and i watched it and it's not it's not the best james bond ever that i i thought it would be because it was so hyped up you know but it was okay it was okay it was about a, a guy with a virus yeah and it like um something with nanobots i haven't seen it but i know something about they mentioned yeah. something about nanobots <clears throat> trying to, he wants to put them in pe- humans and shit all, all mm-hmm. over the country yeah no i've heard they've already had the technology before i was approached i'm in the fitness industry and someone approached me with like nano bracelets that go on your wrist back 15 years ago no yeah about 15 years ago so they've been out for a long time and what they are is like a magnetic frequency to your like genetic and your cells and it, it kind of releases these something to make your body stronger and faster and jump higher and think quicker and more alert it's like this whole you know at, it was it was geared towards athletes back then but i haven't seen them sold since and i can't help but wonder if they're like someone bought them out and went underground with it and said okay we're gonna do this but not you know what i mean keep it like hush hush maybe they found a way to get people like think about this i mentioned before mm-hmm. they trick people into wearing a track on a on a wrist smart mm-hmm. watches Yep. I didn't catch on to it until I was on like watch number two. I was I kept seeing that little <clears throat> green beeping thing on the bumps. Like, wow, yeah, that was smart. The oh, yeah. phone, you I mean it is what it is with the phone at this point. Yeah. Oh, it's... debit cards, the chip in there, they track that too. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. How how what how are they tracking their, it's your data? Same. Well, obviously you know data and stuff, but you yeah. know tracking your whereabouts. Same with uh money. If you have a large sum of money or something like that, they can track that too bills i'm talking about like cash and bills yeah yeah i think everyone should turn off their phones for 24 hours turn off their tvs for like 24 hours and just tell the media we're ignoring you for about 24 hours don't shop don't buy any gas like everyone like 30 days from now say okay on the like the 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 first of march no one's no one's gonna go shopping we're all staying home for one for 24 hours we're not gonna watch tv and watch all these uppers go what do we do like they're not watching tv they're on everyone turned off their phones we don't know where, where anybody is just that a, just start a purge for real. I think if everyone went 24 hours without a phone, that would start a purge because people wouldn't know what to do anymore because uh, they used yeah. to just stand at their phone for so long. I know. I was chatting with some girl I know from work and she's just chatting away and I explained the th- stuff in a, in a text. I'm going, going, going. And she's like, I don't know what I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm like, can you just pick your phone up and talk? She goes, no, nah, I don't feel good. I'm like, okay. Like, I can't have a conversation. I mean, you know, it's it's just awkward. Why can't we just talk to people? It's really... It's annoying sometimes. Like there's days I just want to take my phone. To sh- I told my girlfriend I'm shutting off my phone today. She's like, "Why?" I said, "Because I don't, I don't want to be bothered. It's too easy to pick up, right? You know, mm-hmm. you get that curiosity after an hour or two. You're like, well, what's going on?' Sometimes nothing. It's just a habit. But so I try to keep it off all the time. Yeah, I've learned like the thing to combat that. If I take my phone somewhere, obviously mind where you throw it. I just toss it somewhere in the room. Just toss it over mm-hmm. here in my bed yeah. or something. And I'll forget about it in like five minutes. I'm like, where the hell did I put my phone? <laughs> my girlfriend loses her at all. She'll have it in the bed. I'm like, she's where's my phone? I'm like, you just had it two minutes ago. How can you possibly lose your phone? And then she lost her earphones like three times. And she goes, can you buy me an, ear, an earphone case like the earbuds? Like a case with a clip? I said, why? She can lose that too? I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, come on. Think about it. If you're losing your phone, lose your earbuds. I give you one more thing. You lose that too. Yeah. <laughs> so I well, I said, we'll see. I bought one. We'll see how it goes. It's got a clip on it. So a lot of people do that, though. It's out of sight, out of mind. You Like you said, you throw it down, leave. I mean, I misplace mine when I go to the bathroom or go upstairs. I'm like, where did I put but I put it in certain spots only. So mm-hmm. I train myself to just, I know where it is. So that works out good.
Yeah, the one thing I do <clears throat> do realize as far as society that lets you know how addicted to technology we are as a whole, mm-hmm. when people started taking their phones with them to the bathroom at home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're like, I, I why would, like, why would you do that? I There's do no all, reason for that. I do it all the time. Just like quiet, it's like my quiet time there. You know, like, eh, I don't spend a lot of time in there, but I do it. So, yep. I get. I know some people be playing games and stuff though. Like they would play a whole game on their phone. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I don't, I don't check my scores real quick or an email or something. That's about it. But <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got a job to do, man. I ain't, yeah, I ain't worried about this phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a good question for you. What up? How How old are you? Twenty seven. Okay, so you're a lot younger than me. How do you think at your age we got to this point? Because as a younger guy at 27, you're you're pretty alert. Where I know people that are 30 and 40, 20, 30 and 40, they're just like their minds. Like you, it's it, it, it's hard to even talk to them and have a conversation. They, they can chat on a box, they can chat and text, but if you try to talk to them logically, they don't. It's like they're not quite there. Like how do we? How do you think society got to this point based on what? You see, because you grew up in a different era. Like you probably never used a typewriter. You probably never used a like a manual typewriter or electric typewriter. I'm assuming. No, I know we had one when I was a kid. I never used it, but we had one. You probably may, maybe had a maybe had a home phone. Maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember my grandma had a rotary dial phone with the little. Yeah, your thing. grandma did, but I'm saying with you, like I, my girl. Oh, did I? No, I grew up when I was a kid. We didn't. I, Wi-Fi I was not a thing yet. We had the dial up. You know the. The AOL thing, you gotta you can't yeah. be on the cell phone or not cell phone, yeah. the home phone or anything like that, yeah. just to get on yeah. the internet. Oh, then yeah. it was DSL and yeah. Wi-Fi. So sure. I grew so up how... back when kids had to go outside. I know, I know. And I talked to a guy today at the interview with him. I'll post probably later there tomorrow, but he's 25 and he's like, I don't like to read. I'm like, I'm sure you don't. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> it, well, I mean, he's like, I hate books. I'm like, I'm sure you don't like books because you probably don't expose to many books. I mean my gra- my my girlfriend's grandson's taking a uh, laptop to school. He's in, he's not even in first grade. I'm like, huh? No. Oh, Wait, yeah. I just I just caught what you just said. He's not in first grade, but he's taking a laptop to school. Must be nice. Kindergarten. Kind. Yeah. Then again, these kids are like really smart with them tablets and stuff. Like I saw, they are, um, they are. like a little, not even a one year old was able to navigate on the iPad how to like Netflix. Found the show she wanted to watch and everything. I was like, what the heck? Oh yeah, that's you know, crazy. I don't even know how you, you learn that. Well, you got to watch these kids because you don't know what they're gonna click on and find, and you know they'll shut it off when the parents can buy because they don't know what they're they don't know if it's good or bad. Huh? You know what I mean? So how? Yeah, do you think, yeah, you're right. How, in your view, how do you think society got to this point? Like, how do we get to, you know, just conform with everything? Cell phones and social media. You think really, so? social media is the one that really just put the steroids in it, I guess, for lack of a better mm-hmm. term. Mm-hmm. Because then it was you start caring about what other people think. And you want to fit in, be cool. Yeah. And then along with that came all the PC stuff, like cyberbullying. The first yep. time I heard it, I was in sixth grade, so like 2006. Wow. When it first started, it was like MySpace, Facebook. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I definitely say social media was the biggest downfall. Interesting. And just how self reliant or over reliant we are on technology as a whole. Yeah. Like you we mentioned are. the dude didn't like reading books. It's because it's like, I'd rather watch a video than read, look at words. That's the yeah. logic in their brain, basically. Sure. Sure. I don't mind reading so much, but sometimes it's you know as an older guy you just want to you just want to sit and listen because i've read so many books as, as a younger guy mm-hmm. like le- learning and i'm in sales when i learned sales it's, now it's kind of like you have you have to read scripts they're not just verbally talked and but the new way of training people is just all video and i'm like well that's great but i didn't grow up learning with video so i have to go back and read stuff my own to figure out how i can do it that way like show me how to do an example so but i i think you're i think you're right i think the main thing that i've seen is uh tv i mean that that tv box like my here's an example my mom i, I came back to pittsburgh my dad passed and helped my mom and i said mom what do you think of uh, donald trump i don't like him well why not i, I knew i knew she's gonna say i just want to see wh- wh- why because mm-hmm. she can never she can never really give a reason she just says because i'm like well because why mom like well, what's the reason oh, i don't know. i just don't like him i'm like yeah but you already said that so let's come up with a reason like why like what do you see that he does you don't like Mm-hmm. So, well, he's a racist. I'm like, I knew that was coming. 
Yeah, well, that's because the media said he was, right? Same I'm like, thing you hear from black people who don't like Trump. So I was like, racist. I go, a racist? I go, why do you say he's a racist? Why? I just, I don't like the way he acts. I'm like, why, how does that dictate him being a racist no more? I'm like, seriously. She goes, well, that's what they say. I'm like, who are they? Plus, they, they say it on TV all the time. I'm like, so does that make it right? I'm like, have you ever heard him, him say something on a video racially driven towards a different race or somebody else? She's like, well... Not that I'm aware of. I'm like, so basically you think in your mind, because they said, like they said, that he's a racist. That's what you heard. And that's what you know. She goes, well, I never thought about it that way. I'm like, okay, well, I said, well give us some thought. What do you think? She's a smart person. She goes, I guess. Well, I still don't like the guy. I'm like, oh, my God. She's like, oh, he's he's a chauvinist and all this stuff. I said, in other words, everything they say on TV. She goes, why are you, bu- why are you bugging me with this stuff? Like, I'm not, I'm not bugging you. I'm trying to help her understand that for 75 years, her brain has been just programmed to think, you know, get a job, go to school, pay your taxes, blah, blah, blah. It's like this endless, endless thing. And then if you, you look at society as a whole, we're all going to school more and more. And the Jesuits are building schools for us, but we all die 54% broke. It's like. Yeah, job know, market's messed up as hell. Oh, no, you're wrong. Joe Biden just created the most jobs ever in history of all the presidents. You, did you not see that? Joe Biden? <laughs> yeah, you showed it yesterday. <laughs> they said he had the most he had the most most created jobs of any president under his one year. He's only been there one year. So you're saying in one year, he has more people that got hired on jobs than all four years of every other president's ever done that. I'm like. It's amazing what a pandemic will do. Dude, it's unbelievable. And my buddy, he goes, yeah, well, why, why, why is that wrong? I was like, I'm not even going to discuss it with you, dude, because you, you won't comprehend what I say. He was telling me I'm wrong. I'm like, so there's no sense. We get along fine, but we go back and forth, back and forth. And he's just, he goes, ah, it's a match. That's ah, just a bunch of coincidence. I'm like, really? Okay. How, how many how many coincidences would it take to prove the truth? He goes, huh, that's a good question. You know, <laughs> that liberal brain, the liberal brain, man, they're just like, oh, I don't know. Bro, so you, you preaching to the choir on that one because like my <laughs> brother lives uh-huh. in uh New York. It and it don't get more liberal than New York. Like he he's gay and lives in New York is the extreme of liberals. Mm-hmm. So like we get like we love each other, like we like this, right? Mm-hmm. And he had a post on um uh, what's it, Instagram or something like that, like um uh, talking about the day Biden got a yeah, what am I trying to say? Inaugurated. Mm-hmm. And the post says something about like a new hope for America, blah, 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 blah. I might be paraphrasing yeah. glad that Trump's not in office or something like that. And we had that discussion on the, over the phone. Uh-huh. He was like, um, you know, Trump's racist, whatever. I'm like, then what is Joe Biden? He's the same dude who was like, uh, if you don't vote for me, you're not black enough. What was that? How do I black people mean... let that slide? But then all of a sudden we quick to attack Trump. I don't know. Like make it make sense. And then on top of that, they show how they view black people when they got Cardi B and all these people that have no knowledge of politics, politics or anything whatsoever. Mm-hmm. We just dangle them out there for black votes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's the same sure. thing every single time with the Democratic side of things. It's always We gonna promise black people this, this, this and this. None of it never happens. Even the so-called black president who we all know is not really black. I, I guess. I mean, I don't know. He ain't black. You know, black. Well, what, so what would you consider him then? Malaysian. All them scars is from a hair transplant. Oh, really? Yeah. Like That's if you bad. look at his so-called parents, you can look and tell that is not I Barack Obama is not the result of that. I didn't know that. I heard he's head of I- ISIS too. I heard he created the whole thing. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. I keep hearing his, his wife is a guy, and I'm like, I'm just not convinced of that, man. That, that's where mm. I start drawing the line going, okay, mm. uh, you're getting a little too far-fetched now. It, it's hard, really hard to prove that stuff, you know? Mm. I haven't seen – now, that one, there was a couple videos now that – I know. I've seen the one where it's flopping around on stage dancing on, like, Ellen or something like that. I'm like – Yeah, that dance. I'm like, um, but, I've never you know, seen a woman have anything flopping around uh, down there like that. I, thank, that's like, thank, all thank, I can say on that thank, one. Thank God, I know. And then there but, was another one where um, she was walking down the stairs with two daughters or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's like a bulge in the middle of the dress. And I asked multiple women after seeing this just to make sure I'm not crazy. Yeah. Is there a 
like a pouch, like a little kangaroo pouch on a dress in the front that I don't know about? Is that like some fashion stuff? They're know. like, no. It's like, okay, that uh-huh. is definitely not some keys. That's all I'm gonna say. Those weren't keys down there. Yeah. And yeah. he called her, he called her Michael. I did hear that. I did hear that. And there was a guy who confessed that Barack Obama was gay and he did coke with him, gave him blood, all this other blah blah blah. I'm like, whoa, dude. So I I guess at the end of the day, for me at this point. I try to stay out of the whole thing, the media, the media stuff. I, I keep up with like Zach stuff and I go, huh, that's just another number. I get a kick out of it now at this point. Right. Because it's, it's to the point where I just heard pilots are leaving. They're hiring pilots now. And because uh, people are leaving the, the flight, the, the pilots are quitting either because they're getting sick or they don't want to take a vaccine shot. Yeah. I heard about that. And they said, you only have to have like 1500 hours flight time. I'm like, that's kind of scary. Like, you're just going to hire someone because they have a little bit of flight time. I'm like, I'm not sure I want to go up on a plane for the next couple of years. Yeah. I, I don't know what the requirement is to be a flight, a pilot for a major airline, but I'm assuming that they're taking the bare minimum to get people in there. Out of desperation. I, I don't think that's like, I don't think that's very safe. It's a little scary. No. You know, then you think so. about the side effects of the people that have the. The shot or whatever, say it's a pilot and then something goes bad while he's flying a plane. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. His arms lock up, suddenly can't do yeah. it in his face lock. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We've seen it with a... these football players on the field recently where they just lock yeah. up on the field and yeah. fall this was, this for no reason. Soccer players. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of that going around. I know people that have carditis, yeah. Yep. I know people that have the you know thingy thing and they're getting sick. I'm like, okay, well, um, good luck. I just that's why I tell my like, cat hey, I feel for you, man, but good luck, you know. Yeah, um, there was somebody I was working with one day. It was probably like a month ago. Mm-hmm. I was just in the office overhearing, you know, him talking. He was talking about he got the shot, and then like that night he felt like he was gonna have a heart attack. He was like, he, he was like, Yeah, I just woke up in the middle of the night and my heart was just beating out of my chest. I thought I was really finna have a heart attack and die. And I'm just thinking, mm-hmm. Yeah, mmm. <laughs> have you got and any then, strikes? Sorry, go ahead. And I was gonna say hearing one of my other co-workers talked to him because uh-huh. he got it too. He was talking about, yeah, it'll, it'll psych you out. I'm just thinking this is the logic you're going with is it'll psych you out to the point that you feel like you're about to have a heart attack. It's just you psyching yourself up for this. I don't I, That's not how that works. No, but I, some of the people just think that's the right thing. They think they're doing their part. It's the right thing to do. And your rights don't matter. I'm like, um, okay, that's how you feel. I don't feel that way, but you're entitled the way you want to feel. That's fine. But uh, the other thing that really bothers me about those people is they make my life more difficult because things I want to go do, if I can't because of other people, that's a little bit irritating. But we'll get by. We'll figure it out. You know, I don't think it's, mm-hmm. last, it's not going to last forever. They don't have, uh, you know, <clears throat> this old Jesuit thing there. People are starting to catch on little by little. So it's good. But I don't think we're done yet. I think we have another couple of years of not even Weird. close. No, like, I don't think so. No. TikTok, like I learned putting my clips on TikTok. There are some people I just uploaded the Dwight Smith with the Tim Brown one talking like both sides of the same story, talking about how Bill Callahan sabotaged the Super Bowl. And then some really? people still think it's like fake. You know what I'm saying? Still think that football is real and oh, they're just talking crazy. Like they played in the game. What are you talking about? <laughs> they don't want to they don't want to they don't want to believe it. There's a guy who's just there's a guy, he's a he was an envir- environmental, so kind of like environmental psychologist. So what he, he what he studied was the behavior of amphibians and humans as we've evolved through years and years and years. And he goes, at the end of the day, it's your ego. It won't let you, like, let your ego down and say, oh, you know what? You're probably right. <clears throat> because think about this. If you're seven, let's say you're 75 years old. Someone, I come to my own with all this stuff. And she's just like, uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like you don't believe it, dude. She's like, no, because for seventy five years you heard the same thing. Yeah. Now you're coming back saying you, all your belief systems are wrong. They're gonna go, you're crazy. It's like maybe. But what if I'm? Right? I would say, what if I'm right? What if? What if there's proof that you should look at and maybe justify that? But then think about being lied to your entire life. Like I feel like at my age of fifty three, I think I think I've been lied to a lot by our government. You know, they should they should tell us how to handle our bodies, how to, you know, be healthy, stop eating fast foods, you know, stop taking pharmaceutical drugs that are poisons. Like 
They don't tell us this stuff. They just keep feeding it down our face and put advertisements and TV and, you know, constant, like, in your face. So it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, with, like, 70, however many years of, you know, conditioning, it's hard to undo that. And, you know, that's was where cognitive dissonance. Yeah. So, yeah, especially when you think about they didn't have cell phones and they couldn't actually, you know, look up this information by themselves. It was more controlled mm-hmm. as far as how the information was spread. So. That's part of it. And then there's um I can't remember the name of an, the act, but there was a specific act in America where they all the real um historical documents and everything, they put it in the in the rivers, the lakes, the ocean, set it on yeah. fire, got rid of it. It was like a whole act about it. They don't even talk about it in school. Who did this? America. It was an, an act in America. I forgot the name of it. Wow. Yeah, a whole act where they got rid of the truth. Man. Hmm. Amazing. Then again, if they did talk, teach it in school, it undermined everything else in that book. So, yeah, yeah. that yeah, that that for me is difficult to believe. That uh, not difficult to believe, but at this point, I, my buddies, you don't trust anyone in government, do you? I said, no, I don't. They're liars. They're cheaters. They, they all they do is want to get money and power. What what else? There's no there's no poor politicians. There's not. In fact, I know a girl from high school. Long time ago, went to a strip bar, which I don't frequent often, but happened to go with my buddies one night. This girl was up there, and I'm like, that girl looks familiar. I'm like, yeah, I think she went to our school. She came over. I said, excuse me. I go, come here. I go, is your name? Weren't you, did you go to our school? She's like, yeah. And she knew me, and I was like three years younger than her. She's I remember you. I'm like, you look familiar. She said her name. I'm like, what are you doing here? She's like, like hi, you see a girl in high school, a like, sweet little girl, and I'll see you on the, on the floor dancing naked. You're like. What? Yeah, Her? it's a cult like, no. shock. <laughs> now, some girls I do, if I saw them from high school, I'm like, I I expected that, but not this girl. I said, what are you doing? So I'm making money because I'm running for office. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm like, oh, perf- wow. Perfect requirement. Perfect. Wow. Stripper, <laughs> stripper <laughs> cheat on your spouse, like commit a crime. Like, you know how many criminals are in government? You ever look that up? You ever looked that up throughout history? It's amazing. You you could pull up all the presidents and all the crime, and it shows all the crimes that happened underneath their their four year. Mm-hmm. It, it's just it's ridiculous, dude. It, it's been a, a pattern for what hundred years, two hundred years, longer than that, way longer than that. Like, I, what's I mean, that show on Netflix? I always talk. Was it House of Cards? Is like the one that's. Oh, is that what it is? I think what's the uh, what's the new Kevin Sa- Kevin Spacey? Oh like yeah, the politician or whatever. Yeah, I think House of Cards is like you know the behind what is really like behind the scenes and politics and stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't watch that stuff. Huh? Amazing man. Well, I was planning on keeping this a little bit short today. I'm sure we could probably talk for hours, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I really appreciate you coming on. I'm gonna post this on mine and let's set a time maybe next week for yours. And then, uh, like I said, you know, go on my channel, like sign. I'll do it on yours too. Let's chat on there a little bit, and let's uh, next time you can do your part. You can, you know, kind of interview me, interview me a little bit, and we'll go from there. Hey, sound good, man. Sound good. All right, bro. Appreciate All right, it. hey, stay, stay warm down there in Tennessee. I'm sorry, you guys got snow and everything in that nice warm <laughs> state. Because I've been to Bristol, it's kind of cool, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bristol, nice. It is, it is. Good people, man. Good people in the south. You go south of like Maryland, Virginia, it just gets nicer and nicer. Like the Carolinas and those states, man. I've done sales all over the country. I get those people on the phone. I'm like, oh, my favorite people. They're just nice and genuine. They're polite, you know. So mm-hmm. it's good stuff, man. All right, Denzel. Uh, I'll talk to you soon, bro. All right, man. Likewise. Likewise. All right. Take care. All right. Peace. All right, bye. Bye.